Hey guys, it's Eric from Pixel Planet Studios, and today we're going to take a look at a fluid particle reveal effect in Blender using the Flip Fluids plugin. Let's get started. All right, so before we get started, the two things you'll need are Blender. I'm currently using the 3.2.1 version, but anything after 3.1 uh, should be able to follow this tutorial. Uh, and lastly, the Flip Fluids plugin. Now this can be found on the Blender market, and I'll have a link in the description below. Now this tutorial won't be a deep dive into the Flip Fluids plugin, but if you want me to cover that in another video, please drop a comment below. So the overall process of this effect uh, will be, we have an object we want to reveal, uh, something watertight that the fluid particles can fill. And we'll be simulating the fluids uh, and emitting white water particles, kind of like a added flare to the reveal effect. And then the original object will be hidden and the fluids will be what kind of reveals the shape over time. I just want to give a quick disclaimer to let everyone know that in order to follow this tutorial, you should have a intermediate knowledge of Blender and at least an understanding of how the Flip Fluids add-on will work. If you're ready to go, keep watching. All right, so here in Blender, we have a uh, free rocket model that I got from CG Trader. Uh, I'll drop a link in the description below. And the first thing I did was go through and make the model watertight. So this is capping all the individual parts and that'll help the fluid mesh interact with the edges and faces in a smoother fashion. And then I just joined them to be one mesh uh, for the simulation. Rename this uh, our rocket. All right, now we're gonna create our domain. We wanna scale this to be um, just right around the size of the rocket itself. You know, you don't want to waste any space with simulation time that's not needed. All right, and we'll activate this as our domain. We'll come back to those settings later. All right, now we're going to create our inflow objects. I'm going to keep these as a lower resolution object, so I'll use the icosphere. I'm just going to animate this along the mesh, kind of keep it a little jittery. Uh, that way the simulation will be a little more interesting. Okay, so this is the uh, primary info object here. You can see it kind of twirling around. Now the part of the object that won't really fill in with this current motion are the fins. So I'm gonna create three more inflow objects uh, that will animate to fill the fins towards the end of that animation. Okay, with those animated, we're gonna make those inflow objects. And then on the fin uh, inflow objects, we're gonna add a second substep for emissions. And then for the primary one, we're gonna add a few more. That'll just create more fluid in between frames. All right, to make the inflow a little more exciting, I'm gonna add uh, a little more detail to the inflow one, and I'm gonna displace it. I'll use a cloud texture, and I will uh, apply the coordinates as global so that it evolves over time. This way there's no hard shape or edges that will emit the water and, and just look a little distracting. So I will apply this to the other icospheres as well. Okay, with those set, I'm going to uh, label this rocket as an obstacle. Uh, then I'm also going to duplicate it because we, we are also going to use the same shape to be a force field. All right, so on the obstacle, let's enable that as obstacle. And then we're going to make the friction a little higher and then uh, make the white water influence three. So it creates more white water particles. And we're going to check that as inverse because we're trying to fill the inside of the object. All right, next one, we'll make a force field and use the surface force option. And we'll just keep this as negative 1.5. And we're just gonna use the back faces for now. Change the timeline to 140. And now let's look at our world settings. So we're gonna increase the resolution and then we're gonna use the APIC simulation method to keep things a little faster. I'm gonna change the uh, world scale to six. Now this setting will really depend on the look you're going for. All right, next in the surface settings, we're gonna select object volume 
We're not looking to fill the whole domain, just the object. And then we'll select the obstacle and make sure that we're uh, meshing inside the object. We'll enable whitewater simulation and go to advanced. We're gonna tweak some of those settings down below. You can turn off bubbles and dust. The first thing I'm gonna do is animate the emission of the particles to go to zero towards the end of the simulation, just to get rid of the white water towards the end. And then we'll increase the emission rate for both wave crest and turbulence. And the minimum emission settings I'm gonna tweak, these are values that I kind of found on my own for this particular scene, but um, you know, feel free to play around until you have a look that you like. And then I'll change the lifespan. I want, overall, I want the particles to be on screen uh, for a shorter amount of time. And then the last setting in here is gonna be uh, a developer tool setting. So if you go to your preferences, add-ons, and flip fluids, you're gonna scroll down and enable developer tools. And here you have these new geometry attributes. We're just gonna be using the lifetime attribute today, but uh, it's pretty cool. We'll take a look at those a little bit later. All right, and then inside the world, we're going to uh, lower the gravity quite a bit. And then to speed things up, we'll lower the force field resolution. All right, now with all those settings in place, uh, let's give this a watch. Oh, well, nothing's happening because I forgot one other setting. Uh, in the inflows, because they're animated, I need to make sure that I have the checkbox for export animated mesh for all these enabled. It's a pretty quick animation, so I'm not gonna worry about the skip re-export as we continue. All right, now that we fixed that, we're gonna hit bake again. All right, that simulation finished. Well, let's take a look at what we have. All right, we have our foam particles, spray particles, and our fluid surface. I think it's all looking really cool. I'd say this is the look uh, that we're going for. Fills the shape pretty quickly and has enough detail to keep it interesting. So once your simulation is ready to go uh, and you have the look you want, we're gonna take a look at geometry nodes and use those white water attributes. So we're gonna create uh, another window here and switch this to the geometry nodes editor. And we'll select the white water spray. We'll create a new node tree. And we're gonna be using mesh to points to instance some UV spheres on these points. Um, but we're gonna add some inputs to our geometry. The first one will be lifetime. That'll reflect the attribute that we enabled earlier. And then a couple others, life fade, min and max particle sizes. All right, so in lifetime in the modifier tab, we're gonna enable that attribute. Lifetime fade, we'll start at two. Basically that's how long it takes for the particle to scale to zero. And then the max value would be, you know, what size we want the particle to be at the largest. All right, so we'll plug this into mesh points, map all these ranges we made. Create our primitive shape. I'm just gonna lower these segments to keep the geometry a little lower. All right, and then we'll select the instance move the points to the instance on points, and then attach that scale value we made. And then we'll set this later, but I'm gonna use a set material node and then put it into the output. All right, so I'm gonna set up that same node tree uh, with a couple different variations on particle sizes for the foam and then I'll apply materials, bring in some lights and animate the camera. Okay, so now I have a couple lights. I've got the camera animated and we'll take a look at what we have here. Take a look at the materials that applied. And now that we're happy with the look, we're gonna hit render and you should have something like this.
Thanks for watching and please leave a comment below about anything you'd like today or what you want to see in the future and hit that like and subscribe button. See you next time.